Hello everyone, thanks for coming. I'm here at the Stalls Auto Museum shop, and I'm called Magic Dave. The reason they call me Magic Dave is throughout my entire life, everywhere I go, things just seem to start working. They've called me everything from Wizzy, Wiz Kid, but Magic Dave seems to be what's stuck. So welcome to Powered by Magic Dave. In the beginning, God made the heavens and earth. But in automotive, in the beginning, we start with the battery and the battery cables, and we're going to also throw in the battery safety switch, which I put in on this car here on the floor where it's so conveniently located, and you can hit it with your foot, and the battery is taken out of the circuit. With battery cables and with these switches, there can be some serious mistakes made, which are unknown by a lot of people. So we're going to go over to the bench. I'm going to show you some things and perhaps fill your head with some nonsense. Come on to the bench. So here we are at the bench and we have the basic 12 volt starter system laid out here. Starter motor, battery cables, battery, and the battery cutout switch. With six volt systems and antique cars, there can be some real problems when people go in and start changing battery cables and putting in these ignition switches. So we're gonna go over just what that trouble is. For starters, in order to learn about where the hidden problem is, we're gonna cut one of these switches open so that we can go deep inside and find out where the trouble lies. So come on over to the grinder and let's do some grinding. Okay, before we start with doing some grinding, I want to make something very clear. I cannot tell you the amount of videos I've seen of people working in a shop and working with power equipment with absolutely no ear protection or eye protection. If I catch any of you using equipment and destroying your ears and eyes, because you're going to become an old man like I am one day, and you're going to want to hear the birds sing in the morning, and you're going to want to see the sun rise and set, I promise you. And if you can't, you're going to be a sad old man or a sad old woman. So having said that, let me put on my protection. Whoops. First of all, my ear protection. Second of all, my eye protection. And third of all, my hair protection. Where are my parts? Oops. <laughs> Actually, it's already open for you. I've already opened it by dropping it on the floor. So, why wear safety equipment in the first place? <laughs> Come on over back to the bench. So what we're going to talk about now is voltage and current. Voltage and current can be thought about like water in a water system, where you've got a reservoir, like a dam. The battery, think of it as a reservoir, holding a whole bunch of water called voltage. The pipes coming out of the dam can be different sizes. They can be small or they can be large. The larger the pipe, the more water that could flow through it. The larger the cable, the more electricity that can flow through it. Voltage is the pressure that you're working with. Literally, how much push are the electrons being given to go through the wire. 
whereas the amperage is the flow of current or electrons through the wire. The bigger the wire, the greater the flow. The smaller the wire, the less the flow. With six volt systems, you need really big wires because you have half the voltage or half the pressure. So six volt systems are gonna have these really big cables in them. And the number of times I go into these antique vehicles and people have gone to the parts store and gotten battery cables because the old ones were corroded at the ends and they put in 12 volt battery cables. They have created a huge problem because now they've cut the amount of available current to the starter while it's cranking in half. So the starter slows down and cranks the car slower. And the voltage going to the ignition coil goes down because the amount of current going through the wire diminishes, so the voltage goes down. And if the voltage goes down going into the coil, the voltage available to fire the spark plugs goes down. So if the engine's turning slower because of lack of current, and the ignition coil voltage drops to spark the spark plug drops, then you have two things keeping your car from wanting to start easily, low voltage from the ignition coil to the spark plugs, and a slow turning starter, all because you put in these teeny little cables where these big cables belong. If you have any questions on an old six volt system about cable size, you can't go wrong with a bigger cable. You certainly can go wrong with a smaller cable. Here you can see the larger battery cables for six volt systems and the smaller battery cables for 12 volt systems. They go in sizes of four, six, eight gauge, and when they get down to zero, they go zero, aught two, aught three, and this is an aught two cable. So it's a little confusing, but for six volt systems, you want from a two gauge to a four aught, which is really something for a semi truck, but big cables, in six volt systems is something you want to make sure you have. Now, where it becomes important on these battery cutout switches is we've thrown this one on the floor to open it up, and I'm going to take it apart, and now we're going to look at just how big the current, I have this one set up, battery cable, big cable coming in, goes into this copper terminal on this, it's not brass, which has higher resistance, and then it has to go across, oh my goodness, what have I done with it? This narrow piece of aluminum, so that only so much current can go through that narrow piece of aluminum. Let's look at the difference. Copper cable, aluminum plate. This plate cannot conduct current that this cable can. So what happens is this will get hot because it has so much resistance in it from being aluminum and low voltage. And so you've got six volts down to four volts oftentimes just by going from here to here, you can lose two volts because of a small battery cable and or putting this in. So when you wire these, they come with a wiring schematic. Take this wiring schematic and throw it away. Whether it's a 12 volt system or a six volt system, this is the way they tell you to wire it, and they've put it directly in line 
in the battery cable to the starter. And where the battery cable meets the starter solenoid, and in the case of a Ford, the starter solenoid may be on the fender, but it's the same. Where you get to the starter solenoid, where that cable meets is going to be where all of the power goes to the rest of the car. The fuse block, the ignition switch, it all goes through this wire to the electrical system. And this is what you want to shut the power off to. So when you wire these, what you want to do is instead of wiring it from the battery to the switch, you want to run it from the battery to the starter solenoid. And then you want to run the cable from the starter solenoid to the switch. And finally, the line that goes to the electrical system goes on your battery switch. And now, when you turn on and off the power with your switch, you're turning on and off the power to everything under the dash, everything on the firewall, and the power that's going from the battery to the solenoid is a dead end. It's never hot until the power comes from the ignition switch back to the starter solenoid engagement switch, which I don't have hooked up at the moment, but the starter solenoid is completely isolated until the primary ignition switch side of the solenoid is engaged. So this is the way to wire the battery cutout switch so you've got no voltage drop. And on many cars, after you install it this way and you go to crank the engine over, you'll hear the engine cranking faster, your spark plug voltage will be higher, and your car will start better. And the mystery of the lost voltage and voltage drop will have been solved. If that doesn't make any sense, well, then maybe this will help. Come on, let's go outside and play with the garden hose. So, on this rainy day, I've decided to play with water to give you an idea about amperage that oftentimes we call current. And just what is current all about? Well, in the case of a starter motor and the size of the battery cables, here's a small battery cable with small current coming out of it. And that's what we can do with a low current. With a big battery cable, much bigger, we have all this current. So the difference is exactly the same. Lots of current, lots of volume, big pipes. Low current, small pipes. That's why the size of the battery cable matters, and that's why the size of the switch plate matters inside the switch. Everything in the car, except for the starter motor, uses relatively low current, about 30, 40, 50, 60 amps at the maximum. A starter motor uses between 400 to 600 amps, so you're gonna want big pipes. All right, so the last example we're gonna say was working with six volts. High current, low pressure. So now I'm gonna demonstrate with a 12 volt system, when you increase the pressure, you can do more work with less volume. So 
I've put a nozzle on the end of the garden hose, which ups the pressure. As you can see. So, with more pressure, I can now move our little bottle. Without the pressure, I couldn't do it. With high volume and low pressure, I was able to move it. Now with higher pressure and lower volume, I can move it. It's the same principles with electricity and specifically the starter motor. Well, that's all the nonsense for today, kids. Thanks for coming and visiting me, Magic Dave, at the Stalls Automotive Museum Garage. Hope you come back and visit again. Till next time, keep it on the road. See you later.